Welcome to your town television program. My name is Jeff Klein, your host for this segment of the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation um, uh, program where we bring you faculty and students uh, and staff and what they're doing in your local area at the Naval Postgraduate School. Uh, today we have uh, a Jake DeZosiak who is a, a professor, associate professor, or assistant professor, research assistant professor, is that right? Correct. Right. In the uh, uh, mechanical engineering department, yes. is that true? Uh, and he is also in charge and manages the Total Ship Systems Engineering Program, which we're going to talk about in detail because it's a very unique program. To my knowledge, uh, the only other um, uh, school that has such a thing is MIT, is that correct? So MIT does have a similar program, right. though ours is a, a, a bit different in its uh, multidiscipline um, approach a, approach and aspects of the program. Great. Well, let's address that when we talk about the TSSC sure. program. But now let's learn a little bit about more about you. You're not a traditional academic. You actually came via the Navy. So uh, how did you end up uh, joining the Navy? How did I end up joining the Navy? So I started my naval career in the Navy ROTC program at the University of Michigan. So are you from Michigan originally? I actually am from Michigan. I oh, am, great. I am from a little town called Redford right outside of Detroit. Oh, well, I know where Detroit so, is. <laughs> so I um, received a Navy ROTC scholarship out of high school mm -hmm. and went to the University of Michigan. Well, what interests you in the Navy? What interests you in the Navy? Did you have a history the there? Or? So I actually really not so my uh, my father was a private first class during the Korean War okay and that's about the extent of military, military service, service okay. within <laughs> our family um, here in the United States and so I had always been fascinated with um, the Navy from World War two movies and oh and great growing up in and around Detroit so we had the river and obviously the Great Lakes mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I had applied to the Naval Academy and also through the ROTC scholarships and I was very fortunate to uh, receive um, the scholarship to the University of Michigan. And so when I went there, I actually wound up uh, initially studying electrical engineering. Right. So the interesting story behind that is I had a, uh, an instructor during high school who kind of took me under his wing and taught me electronics. So and that so, got you interested in electronics. So that engineering. got me interested right. in um, it was a it was actually in a, a um, basic house wiring course. Oh, okay. And so I, I was able to f finish that um, portion of it very quickly. And that's then, applied electrical engineering. So that's kind of applied, <laughs> right? right? And so we actually went into um, designing different games and other um, electronics components. So this was back when circuit cards were still large and right. resistors and so you could still capacitors see <laughs> and you could see them. And right. so I actually went through and made the circuit cards and dipping them in acid and eating away the copper. And this was all in high school. And so this was in high school. Right. And so this was, I had actually wanted to do word working shop and wound up taking <laughs> Oh, the electrical and electronics then, because that's all that was available, so, as sometimes high school students don't get a choice between uh, what they really want to do. And, and it turned out to be an absolutely outstanding experience. And so I was able to, to work through the circuitry and then um, actually build the device. So I had made, of all things, a metronome. Cool. So, um, which um, having um, played several instruments in the band was kind of a, a nice um, thing to thing produce, to have yeah. as long uh, along with it. And so this was an electronic metronome. So this was an electronic metronome. How did it keep its timing by a capacitor? Or so um, right through the. Uh, Pastors had a little LED visual display oh, of an arc. Me? And this was all in high school, And this right? was in high school, yeah. and so I look back at that and, uh, and say, wow, that was very simplistic. Though it, it was a great, uh, great starting point. Yeah, but you know, it's amazing how, uh, and I don't, uh, I hope our, our primary and secondary teachers understand how much they can shape our lives this way. 
That's great. Right. So you were in the band too. What'd you play in the band? So I actually played uh, clarinet and tenor saxophone. Is that right? That's great. Did and you carry so that on to University of Michigan? or? I, I did, in fact. And so I had uh, the opportunity while I was in high school to play at the University of Michigan through a youth program um, for high school students there. Sure. I was selected through that and was able to play um, and a campus band through the uh, university throughout my uh, time at Michigan. That must have been fun. So it, it certainly was. Did you go to all the football games then and had to play for all the football um, games? Didn't have to, was not in the marching band. So oh, you were in the marching band. Was not, so band. yes, okay. different band. So didn't have to play uh, in the marching band, but yes. The, so you didn't uh, have to freeze to death. <laughs> no, but did go to the football games and with 110,000 odd of your closest <laughs> friends right. during uh, football Saturdays. Right. So you had already you were already in our uh, Navy uh, Reserve Officer Training Corps yes. unit when you went to Michigan. Uh, but what made you switch for then from electrical engineering to mechanical engineering? So I did. I passed through mechanical engineering and eventually onto naval architecture. And so you never and you didn't come with a naval architecture construct, is that right? I so no. So I, I actually um, so I went from electrical, started off and said. There's a lot of math to this electrical, uh, electrical stuff. stuff. <laughs> and so quickly changed over to mechanical engineering, which was... It's those darn electric fields, you know, that's got a lot of calculus absolutely. associated so with it, right? calculus and functions and Fourier transfer and... Oh, all that crazy stuff. All those great things. And well, so I r realized I shifted to become an industrial engineer, and our motto was... We're not real engineers, but we're smart enough to get paid the same. So, <laughs> but we have right. I avoided the same things. But go ahead. So and, you decided to become an ME in the so naval architect. Became an ME, and then I actually had a, a class through my uh, naval science um, program, um, which introduced us to um, some basic uh, naval architecture, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Wow! And it, it was that perfect intersection between design and hands-on and just, you know, the, looking at the problem of a ship that incorporated not only mechanical but electrical arrangements and all kinds of different constraints that were very different than what I saw in electrical and mechanical engineering. And, and so, and from there I, you know, having a tow tank at the university there in a hydrodynamics lab, and it just, it was a perfect fit. It's all, and there's almost an art to that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm putting the words in your mouth now, but it's the difference between a civil engineer, who is a very important job, and uh, an architect uh, to, that actually designs and the functionality of the buildings, uh, except your buildings have to go through the water and, and be in two different mediums at the same time. Correct. All right, so that's... So. Uh, now, I didn't know University of Michigan was a big hub of naval architecture. Do you ever reach back to their faculty at times? So, I, I have in the past. So, it's only one of about six or seven universities um, in the United States that has a dedicated naval architecture program. There, there's a few other schools that have ocean engineering and some closely related um, curricula, mm -hmm. um, but MIT and the University of Michigan, um, Stevens, Webb. Um, Naval Postgraduate School. Naval Post. <laughs> so, so th there's there's a very limited number. So let's go from uh, University of Michigan to actually your time in the service. You qualified mm -hmm. as a surface warfare officer in destroyers and cruisers. Um, and tell me about some of the jobs and experiences you had doing that. So I started off um, as young SWOs did at the time, going through the surface warfare um, officer school in Ro uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Right. I arrived at the perfect time at the end of September yep. to be there yeah, from the September winter. to March. <laughs> um, heard I all did of too, my by the friends <laughs> tell me about how wonderful it was and all the shops closed up about the time that we showed up. Sure, um, but you were from Michigan, so you knew what snow was. Michigan, so <laughs> it, it, it was okay, and so I had gone through that in my initial training there, and then um, had gone into gas turbine engineering. Mm -hmm. Was assuming that I was going to go off from there and work in the engineering department at, in uh, USS Kincaid, which was the Spruance class destroyer. destroyer. Right. 
met the ship out on deployment, and I showed up on the uh, quarterdeck, and the captain says, welcome aboard. You are now the strike warfare officer. Which is totally different. Which that is totally you're, different. You're, you're designing uh, <laughs> Tomahawk strikes in different areas. Tomahawk strikes. Nothing to do with yes, engineering. And so <laughs> interestingly enough, I looked at the forecastle of the ship, the forward end, and was a, a bit surprised because there were no VLS launchers nor Tomahawks on that ship. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so my very first day moment there of active duty on board this ship and I was completely confused. Uh. Soon to find out that um, we would go into the shipyards in Long Beach. And so you and, had to be qualified. And go through, well actually take uh, Kincaid through the retrofit. Right. Um, which then completely played into the naval architecture and engineering um, desires that I had to sure. further pursue that. So as everybody else on board was having an absolute miserable time in the shipyard. You were loving off, it. <laughs> they were cutting a huge hole in the forward end of the ship and ripping everything out and putting it all back in and it was all eventually going to be mine, you know, to train um, a brand, stand up a brand new division and, and uh, work with the sailors um, wow. to take this um, ship and uh, essentially give it a new capability. So not a lot of officers actually get to do that, get to actually watch the uh, physical building of their capability that they're going to be in charge of later. Right. So after the Kincaid, what did you do? So after Kincaid, I went on to be the navigator on the USS Rents, mm -hmm. a f um, Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate. Which is a great job for the navigator. So yeah. that was a uh, phenomenal um, experience. So also a San Diego home ported uh, ship as well. Um, so one of my highlights on there, I, I actually got to do the Portland Rose Festival. Oh, in, that must have been in fun. In the transit um, up the Columbia and the oh. Willamette Rivers. So you had to go so across the bar? So across, across the, the bar. Oh, okay. So better part of a day or so yeah. traveling along a fairly narrow, shallow river. As navigator. As the navigator yep. and having a wonderful um, river pilot um, basically the whole time saying, don't worry, sir, it's okay. It's okay. And you're going to worry every second. I, I know that all you can see is grass on either <laughs> side, but we're fine. We got plenty of we, water. We've got, That's right. We're, we're good. So and yeah. that, that was uh, also, you know, fairly rare, um, but certainly a wonderful experience to be able to uh, um, take the ship uh, up there and, um, and then back down uh, out to the ocean. Well, now, after that tour, did you come to MPS as a student? So and actually, I had a, a slight um, uh, stop uh, back in the Midwest. Okay. So I went to, um, took a set of orders at Great Lakes. And so... Great Lakes Training Command. The Great right. Lakes, uh, Navy, actually at the Naval Training Center at Great right. Lakes. And originally, I was to go there and be a, a division officer department head within the engineering school. Mm-hmm which I thought would be a great experience. Uh, at this time, I was uh, looking to trans transition over to becoming an engineering duty officer. I showed up there, and on Friday, I met my commanding officer, and then on Monday, I got shipped over to the recruit training command, <laughs> which is the other, um, pr uh, or the, the primary tenant command of the training center there. So the nothing to do with engineering. Nothing to do with engineering. <laughs> they said, you're a surface warfare officer and we need help training recruits. So I spent the next couple of years um, with uh, approximately a thousand recruits every nine weeks. <laughs> Had uh, a phenomenal senior chief and, and later master chief and uh, 40 rec uh, recruit commanders who, company commanders who uh, hopefully impacted in a very positive way for the next I was gonna say, 20 years. the uh, future of the Navy. Future of the Navy. Absolutely. So that's, the, that's the payback on that one. So that was a very rewarding uh, career, or career chain, or stop off, I guess we'll call it. And then you came to And then MPS. I came to the postgraduate school. And what did you study? Mechanical engineering? So I studied mechanical here? engineering. Right. And uh, what was your research area? So my research area was in um, underwater explosions and uh, shock. Oh, and, that's cool. So how that affects the ships? Uh, right. Uh, so at the, the, the time, at that time, the um, 
early bird class uh, was destroyers, going, yeah. the destroyers were going through a second set of shock trials um, since they had had a, um, an improvement of Flight 2, Flight 2 Alpha, I believe is the, uh, the um, church, uh, USS uh, Winston Churchill, right. so the DDG-81. And so we were looking at the uh, finite element analysis and structural response of the ship itself mm -hmm. during those shock trials. So that, uh, from there you transitioned actually to part of our faculty. And with yes. a couple of minutes we have left, uh, we have about three minutes, I want to talk about the Total Ship Systems Engineering Program because it's a unique program, and I'll summarize it in a way before I uh, ask you specific questions, sure. is um, it's an interdisciplinary uh, uh, opportunity for our students to participate in an actual design of a ship. It's a three-course sequence, so it takes, uh, s uh, well, it's three quarters. Uh, uh, so, so it's actually about six quarters. Oh, six and quarters, and okay. So there are eight courses in all. That they take that the students take and right. so the, the the students come from mechanical engineering and systems engineering electrical engineering and then combat systems phys applied physics and they're in and charge of designing this particular ship correct so yeah. I, I, every, every year they're giving a given a surface um, ship to design based on some requirements that are hopefully very timely in the Navy and um, and interesting to the students and they go through the systems engineering process all the way through the um, high level or conceptual design. Now we did uh, we did talk about the uh, large displacement unmanned surface vessel in an earlier segment. I want to show another one of these that was uh, where did you help design the Minuteman? The Minuteman was a small combatant right down to the component level and uh, I thought very impressive because of a very low radar cross-section while at the same time being heavily armed ship. So the Minuteman was from a couple of years ago and it was a very interesting uh, design requirement. So it was supposed to be a very affordable um, vessel that was quickly produced um, to be a missile boat. Mm -hmm. And it actually had a lot of tie in our history back to the PT boats of the World War II. Sure, and, which is very descriptive of the PT boats of World War II. Correct, and so the um, the concept there was to have uh, a small crew um, to be able to go out and work in small groups mm -hmm. of these missile boats, two, four, maybe eight as a squadron, so a, a lot of uh, similarity to the way that the uh, PT boats operated, operated in World War II. Sure. And then there was another one that just completed before the, the large displacement unmanned surface vehicle. This was the Burroughs class offshore patrol and research vessel. And again, I'm holding <coughs> just artist depictions here, but these are actually designed right down to the pipe and propulsion level and uh, a logical uh, maritime and uh, naval architect decisions are made on these uh, particular designs. So it, with talk about the larger areas of the designs, the Navy has a design capability in our Navy Surface Warfare Center at uh, Carter Rock. Correct. Do they actually receive these designs as well as they come out from our students? So they do. Um, we're very fortunate to have many reviewers come out from the program executive offices from the Naval Warfare Centers and interact with our students during the design phase. Um, and so in particular, the Barrel class was a um, uh, program executive office uh, for ships and the Science and Technology Directorate was our, one of our sponsors for that um, process. And what they were really looking for was a ship that had a flexible design. Mm -hmm. And so the Barrel class actually is three ships in one. Ah. And so uh, the best way I would describe it is if you remember the 1980s General Motors, uh, Cutlass Supreme, the Grand Prix, they were all the Monte sort of Carlo. The, same car, yeah. the very basis for the ship and the platform itself had a common core. Right. And then um, we had a Coast Guard variant and a Navy variant and actually a um, NOAA variant as well for oceanographic research. 
And so the, the basic design was then added upon, dependent on these missions, and we actually gave the students the requirement to then be able to upscale from the most minimal design, which was the oceanographic research vessel, all the way up through the Navy to vessel. Bad. Sure. Right. Well, Jake, uh, we've run out of time, but thank you very much. You give the experience to the students that they're actually able to apply what they learn in the classroom to advanced designs that benefit both them and the Navy and after they leave the classroom. So thank you for your work at uh, the Naval Postgraduate School, and I look forward to working with you there. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you for joining us for this segment of the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation-sponsored uh, Your Town television program. Join us again when we talk to about to and talk to interesting faculty and students and what they're doing in your local area.